Hello and welcome back to another MCU ranking video. This time we're doing another tournament style rank. If you don't know how these work, pretty much it is just like a March Madness bracket if you want to think of it like that. Obviously we have the first round matchups all set up here. And then as we go on to the second, third, and fourth round, we end up getting to our final four and then picking my favorite MCU villain. So it's head-to-head -head matchups instead of a standard ranking. I just think it's a little bit more interesting. So let's get right into this. I just want to say first, I'm not going to explain super in depth for some of these matchups like Thanos versus Claw. I don't need to explain a lot for these picks, so I'm going to save some time earlier on so I can go more in depth in the later, more important rounds. So yeah, as I just said, our first matchup is Thanos versus Claw, and Claw is an entertaining villain and all, but the amount of effect that Thanos had on the MCU and how great of a character he is, Thanos has to win this. We're wasting no time right off the bat. So our next matchup is Aldrich Killian versus Ronan the Accuser. This is actually a pretty interesting matchup. Now, I know a lot of people hated Iron Man 3 and they didn't like the twist and how Aldrich was the actual villain. And on the other end, we have Ronan, who's been in a few movies already. But honestly, I think Ronan is one of the most boring villains in the MCU. Also, I don't know why, I just get so mad every time I see this man. It looks like Claymation is put on a screen, how awkwardly he moves, like... I get it's just going off the comics, but something about Ronan is just super bland to me, and I don't like him every time he's on the screen. So although Aldrich isn't the best, I still think he gets a little bit too much hate, so I'm going to move him on to the second round. Next we have Cole Obsidian versus Yanrog. Once again, this is kind of a nothing round here, but Cole Obsidian really has barely any moments in the MCU, but Yanrog, once again, just kind of a boring villain, honestly. I did not care for him at all in Captain Marvel. Turn off the light show and prove! Prove to me, you can beat me with that. And I honestly think one of the biggest problems with Captain Marvel was the villain. Like, there was nothing interesting happening with the villain plotline. The scrolls were a little interesting, but Yanarag on his own, not that great. For a pretty great actor, just didn't really have much to do in this movie. So honestly, just the fact that Cole Obsidian is a pretty, uh, pretty badass villain and has some cool scenes in Infinity War, he's going to have to go up above Yanrog. Sorry for all the Yanrog fans out there, but he's getting eliminated already. And we're getting these weaker villains out of the way. Whiplash versus the Abomination. Hey. Yes. I want my board. Abomination is always fun and cool and all to watch. Pretty much a Hulk fight Hulk. And Whiplash, although there's a lot of problems with Iron Man 2, I don't think Whiplash was one of them. If they just focused down on one villain being Whiplash or Justin Hammer, it could have been a good movie. They just had way too many things going on, but I do think Whiplash was a pretty cool concept and pretty good villain. You could see some motivations and stuff that, I don't know, Abomination just isn't that great of a villain, so it's hard to make him go past Whiplash, even though Whiplash isn't that great himself. Next, we have Ultron versus Villain Nebula. Obviously, she becomes good and bad and back and forth, obviously. Although Nebula, I think, as an overall character is pretty great, as a villain, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Whereas Ultron, on the other hand, I think is one of the most underrated villains. I honestly think the biggest problem with Ultron is how they set him up in the trailers. They made it seem like it was going to be like this horror villain, this new dark concept that you haven't seen in the MCU before. I had strings, but now I'm free. There are no strings on me. Strings, strings on me. I got no strings, so I have fun. I'm not tied up to anyone. And then he came out and he was kind of like Tony Stark, just cracking some jokes, making puns. And wasn't all that menacing, even though he was super powerful. But I overall do think he was done well. I just think they kind of misled people and set their expectations in the wrong direction. Nobody has to break anything. Clearly you've never made an omelet. You beat me by one second. Next we have Winter Soldier or our boy Corvus. Not even wasting time. Winter Soldier. Just the connection he and Cap have made him such an interesting villain in the Winter Soldier, so he's got to go way, way past here. I'm with you to the end of the line, pal. Loki and Killmonger. This is a powerhouse around. Some of these are people's favorite MCU characters, not even just villains, just all-time characters. They're both kind of in completely different areas like Loki's more of a comic relief although he does have some more serious moments and some very evil things he does whereas Killmonger is more of the serious take more of the political villain 
But overall, I think Loki is just such an amazing character in the MCU. He's been in so many movies and has changed so much in the trickery. I just think it has to be Loki, although Killmonger, anyone against anyone else probably in this first round, he could have advanced. But against Loki, that's just a hard task. So Loki moves on. Now we're on to Taserface versus Hela. Obviously, no questions asked. This one's Taserface. I don't even think I have to explain myself. Glory with a new captain. Taserface! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm, your name is... It's Taserface? Do you shoot tasers out of your face? It's metaphorical! <laughs> Alright, hopefully nobody clicked off and disliked the video for that. Obviously, I was just joking, Hela has to advance past Taserface. So now we have Thanos versus Aldrich. Also, just want to throw this out here. In this matchup mode, it makes you do the entire left side and then the entire right side. How I did it before is I would just go through the first round on both sides and then from there. But we'll just go with how the matchup mode wants us to do it. So like I said, I think Aldrich gets too much hate, but there is no way in any universe that Thanos can lose to Aldridge. I mean, I mean, this just makes no sense to pick anyone else besides Thanos, so he's gotta advance. Now we have an interesting one, Cole Obsidian versus Whiplash. And while I said before, Whiplash isn't like the most developed villain. Hey. Yes. I want my board. I think there was more there, but Iron Man 2 was just so crowded. Cole Obsidian is really just a side villain for now, so, and now he's dead, so we gotta put Whiplash up. We have an absolute powerhouse around here with Ultron versus the Winter Soldier. The most versatile substance on the planet. And they used it to make a frisbee. Typical of humans. Now these two villains actually have super close ties to the main protagonist. Obviously one was more in a solo film with Captain America and the other one was in Avengers, but he's really connected to Tony Stark in that. Like I said before, I think Ultron gets way too much hate and they just marketed him poorly with the trailers. I think he was a great villain, but Winter Soldier, I think the just the pure emotion between him and Cap, how much mental trauma he causes Cap and having to make these decisions and you see the good in Cap because of the Winter Soldier when he's obviously in this mind control. It's a villain you feel really bad for. He's great at just being a villain and gives great motives to our hero, so I think Winter Soldier has to win this round. Now this might be controversial, I'm not sure, so leave a comment right now letting me know which one of these two you think should have won. And while you're scrolling down in the comment, leave a like on this video, it really helps me out and helps other people see the channel. But yeah, Winter Soldier is going to advance this round. And we have another strong round here with Loki and Hela. So I think without a doubt, these are the two best Thor villains we've had, we've only had three Thor movies obviously, but Malkith is just a terrible villain and these two are amazing. I honestly think Hela is an amazing villain. She she just played being evil so perfectly. But once again, Loki's impact in so many different movies, and he has that other side with the humor aspect where he's always entertaining, but also super menacing at the same time. I'm sorry, Hela, but Loki's gotta advance here. Hela would have won once again against most other villains, but against Loki, just too strong of a hero. Now we have Thanos versus Whiplash. Now Yes. I want my board. Whiplash has gotten this far, which probably is too far, but he's had some pretty easy opponents to this point until he met Thanos. So I'm sorry, but this is the end of the road for Whiplash. No explaining needed. And Winter Soldier versus Loki, two amazing villains that have such tight connections to the protagonists in their respective movies here. Now, not to repeat myself too much, but we have two kind of different villains. Winter Soldier in the villain form, which we're ranking him based off of being a villain, is more one-dimensional like i said he has a good connection with cap and that makes that a really interesting dynamic and he's great at being bad but i think loki's versatility of being able to be a comic relief character menacing at the same time and so powerful like we really don't see how powerful loki is besides the little snippets but he really is underrated how powerful loki is with his magic and i'm sorry winter soldier but once again it's just another great villain falling victim to an amazing villain so loki's gonna advance here now we get an Infinity War rematch here with Thanos versus Loki again. No resurrections this time. Two absolutely amazing villains. 
main Avengers villains too, so it's pretty even course right here for them. Now, I haven't really talked about Thanos that much. I've been talking more about Loki because his matchups have been a bit closer and more interesting. Thanos has kind of had a sweep to the finals here. But I mean, it goes without saying, Thanos is one of the most menacing and smartest villains we've ever seen. He's also one of the most quotable villains in movie history. Like, whether you like it or not, everything this man says is an amazing quote. All that for a drop of blood. You have my respect, Stark. When I'm done, half of humanity will still be alive. I hope they remember you. And Thanos is truly a villain that is always like five steps ahead of the hero, which just really added an interesting dynamic to the MCU. That's something we really haven't seen before because the villain normally wins early on and then their plans start slowly crumbling and crumbling and crumbling and the hero always wins. So this just gave us something completely different with Thanos. These are both super unique villains compared to the rest of the MCU. And like I said, I love Loki, but Thanos is just a different level. The writing and acting for Thanos, like I said, is just the perfect villain. And it'd be a crime to put Loki over him as much as I love Loki. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with that. So let me know if you think Loki or Thanos should have made the final for the left side. And let's get to the right side. Now we have Ego versus Ironmonger or Obadiah Stane. And honestly, I think Ego is a super overrated villain. I just feel like the whole storyline was a little weird having him be this father figure for Peter Quill and then finding out that he killed millions of Peter's siblings and stuff. I don't know. The whole thing just came off weird. It was a waste of a great actor. And I honestly feel like the villain was the biggest problem with Guardians 2. It just did not feel right. And he didn't even know who the villain was for half the movie. And then when he finally figured it out, it just wasn't that great of a reveal and the villain wasn't that great. Whereas we've definitely seen better villains than Ironmonger in the future. This is a great starting point for the MCU, and it's kind of the classic anti-hero version of our hero, where they have similar powers, but just an evil mindset. It's impossible. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave! With a box of scraps! But that doesn't mean it didn't work perfectly for this first Iron Man movie. Just simplistic enough, and Jeff Bridges does a great job as this role, so he's going to advance here. Now we have Mysterio versus Malkith. So we have on one end, a super creative and interesting villain that's kind of different than anything we've seen in the MCU up until this point when it's the most recent MCU movie, so there's a lot of villains before it. With an actor that put their absolute all in it with Jake Gyllenhaal in Mysterio's role. And on the other hand, we have one of the most boring villains we've ever had in the MCU that I could care less about Malkith. Every time he's on the screen, it's literally the worst dialogue and everything I've ever seen. This is just Mysterio by a landslide here. Supreme Intelligence versus Yellow Jacket is a boring ass round. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't even feel like explaining this. Yellow Jacket's winning. Supreme Intelligence is a whack villain. Could have been done so good, but it was just stupid how they did it. I didn't like it at all. Ghost and Ebony Maw. Ebony Maw was a pretty cool villain in Infinity War, and I think he's in Endgame a little bit, but really, we didn't see a whole lot of him. And Ghost also didn't see a whole lot of, and it wasn't really a villain for a lot of the movie towards the end. But I still feel like there's just a lot more interesting stuff with Ghost and her backstory, and it was just a character I cared for more. So as Ebony has some cool powers, I gotta give this one to Ghost. Now we got Surtur, Son of a Bitch, and the Vulture here. Thor, Son of Odin. Surtur, Son of a Bitch, you're still alive. First of all, if you haven't already, leave a like for that terrible pun on Thor Ragnarok. But honestly, we just have not seen enough of Surtur. He was a little bit in Ragnarok in the beginning and at the end, but we didn't really get to see him as a villain, whereas the Vulture is one of the most well-developed villains, and it was a perfect villain for Spider-Man Homecoming. Probably one of the best motives we've seen in the MCU, even though he was in the wrong with how big he was escalating his uh, robbing business pretty much with the tools and stuff he was making, and stealing I guess I should say. But still, this is one of the better villains we've had, and Surtur was just not a bad villain, but just not a big enough role to compare against Vulture. Now we have Red Skull and Cassilius, and Cassilius was just a poorly done villain for me. I love Doctor Strange, but this is just a boring villain and a pretty bland villain. Whereas Red Skull isn't the greatest, but it did work pretty good for the first Avenger, and good enough to get him past the first round. Now we have the Destroyer and Proxima Midnight, and I'm gonna give this a Proxima Midnight because the Destroyer is just a big metal robot that doesn't talk or do anything. And our final right side first round battle here is crossbones versus dormammu and i do like crossbones like he was one of my favorite villain 
he was one of my favorite villains before I got into the MCU. I just wish there was a bigger role for him in the MCU. I understand why there wasn't, but he just didn't get a big enough role. And Dormammu is one of the coolest villains that we're probably going to see more of, and I'm really excited for that. So I gotta give this to Dormammu. Also gave us one of the most memorable scenes we've ever seen. So now we have Iron Monger versus Mysterio. And like I said, Iron Monger was a very simplistic villain, but also worked perfectly for the movie he was in. Whereas Mysterio was just completely outside the box. Everyone knew he was going to be a villain, but you were still so convinced that maybe they will make him a good guy just because of Jake Gyllenhaal's acting. It just took this movie that, to a whole nother level, and I think Mysterio has to move on. Where are you headed? I'm going to go find MJ. Good luck, kid. I'll give you about a 50-50 chance. You're pretty awkward, so... <laughs> Yeah. Next we have Ghost versus Yellow Jacket. And honestly, I think Yellow Jacket falls victim to the formula in the MCU too much. And if you don't know what the MCU villain formula is, well, it's pretty much what Obadiah Stane was in Iron Man. The villain is the same ish as the hero, same powers, maybe a little bit bigger and better. Ends up losing anyways, even though they're a bigger and better version. And the hero with, with the better ideas, I guess, wins. It was done good in Iron Man, but in this, it just felt way too boring ghost was definitely an upgrade because like i said it's just an interesting character it feels like there's more there so i'm gonna give this one to ghost red skull versus the vulture once again the vulture is one of the most one of the most well done villains and i just like seeing him as a person you see his motives but he's still so menacing like the scene of him with peter in the car is one of my favorite mcu scenes does she know no what so she does good Close to the vest. I'll kill you dead. Yes, that's what killing you means. Whereas the Red Skull doesn't really have any iconic moments and he's just kind of there. And that's not really the main focus of the first Avenger anyway, so I gave this one to the Vulture. Proxima Midnight versus Dormammu. Once again, Dormammu was very, very small role in the MCU, but at the same time, it was a huge role and a huge moment for Doctor Strange, so I gotta give it to Dormammu still. So Ghost, being a kind of smaller villain in Ant-Man and the Wasp, but more interesting, got her to this point, but Mysterio, once again, such a well-done villain with so much passion in the acting. I just have to keep bringing that up because it really is amazing. And just such a different type of villain than we've seen before, I gotta give it to Mysterio. Vulture versus Dormammu, I love my boy Dormammu, but I'm gonna have to give it to Vulture just because how important he was to Homecoming with Dormammu we just met in the last five minutes of uh, Doctor Strange. It's really just a screen time thing and the Vulture, just a more interesting character because we got to know him more. And he's a natural human, which also helps. Now this is a really hard round. Two amazing and iconic Spider-Man villains here. But at the end of the day, I gotta think which one is just the better villain. They're both amazing. I'm gonna have to talk my way through this because I don't even know what I'm gonna pick yet. After sitting here and thinking, as well done as Mysterio was done as a character and Jake Gyllenhaal did amazing, I really think the Vulture is an amazing villain that deserves to move on. See, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> Let me explain myself here. It's really just the layers to him. You see his regular life, he has a family, they don't really know what he's involved in, but the things he's doing are for his family, so obviously it doesn't justify it, but you see the reasoning. But at the same time, you can see how he's willing to do way, way too out of pocket things in almost killing a kid for just trying to get him out of the wrong business in obviously Peter Parker. But I just think seeing that regular life of Vulture just makes him that more interesting of a villain. You also see how ruthless he is and he has some of the best scenes and quotes in this in the MCU, so I think it's gotta go to the Vulture. It hurts my heart to let go of Mysterio here, but the Vulture advances. And we're at the final round. Now, I wanna have some epic debate here, but do I really have to do that? And I said, I love that we get to see both sides of the Vulture and you get to see this true motivation, but Thanos is just too menacing and too good of a villain with so many quotes, so many iconic scenes. And once again, it's just refreshing to see a villain that was actually like multiple steps ahead of the heroes at every way. So as much as I love the Vulture, he really is just coming in at a way lower weight. He's fighting a heavyweight in Thanos, who was a huge villain in two Avengers movies and building up to since the first Avengers movie, 
Whereas Vulture was an amazing villain, and I'd say he's probably the best right there with Loki, Mysterio, and the Vulture. I'd say those are the three best for little smaller movies, but the effect Thanos had on the entire MCU, he has to be the greatest villain. Let me know which picks you disagree with, because I'm sure you're going to disagree with a lot of them. So I'll quickly scroll down for you guys to see every round and the brackets here, if you want to recap quick. So I'm just asking for one thing. If you're new here, drop the subscription. I have tons of MCU videos. Leave a comment saying your top four villains in the MCU. My top four from the bracket standpoint ended up being Thanos, Loki, Vulture, and Mysteria. And make sure to click on one of the playlists that are on your screen now. I have tons of MCU ranking videos and other MCU videos in general. Subscribe for more and I'll see you guys in the next one.